when it comes to expectations versus reality, it's all over the map. Sometimes there are things that you expect to like because they have all the elements of your taste and you love them. Stuff like Blade Runner 2049, Berserk 98, that kind of thing. I have high expectations going in. My expectations pay off. It's, it's a good experience. There's stuff you go into with no expectations or you, you've never even really heard of it before and you read it for the first time or you watch it for the first time. You're like, you know what? This is much better than I expected. Oshi no Ko is like that for me. Uh, Girls and Panzer. Sometimes movies, like I just wasn't really expecting to like, but I watched them. And I'm like, you know what? That was pretty good. Babysitter. The first Babysitter movie is, is one of those. Then there's um, things you think are going to be good, but they're just kind of meh. And then there's this category. Things that you expect to like. Things that, ha that tick all the boxes. Maybe you've seen part of it before. And you sit down and you watch it and you're like, this is just not good. Like, nostalgia. Not only did the nostalgia not pay off, it's just bad. Like, it, it's not even... Because sometimes your tastes change over time. Like, sometimes you can look back at something that you liked at a kid and go, I'm just older now, my tastes have changed. If I was going to be kind of objective, this isn't bad. Like, the writing's not bad. It's, it can be, it's wholesome. It's, it's fine. It's just not my taste anymore. But then sometimes you're rewatching it, like, you know what? This was, this was bad to begin with. Why did I even like this? And Witch Hunter Robin kind of falls into that category. It's very rare that I really find something that's less than the sum of its parts. Um, and I would say that this is one of the ultimate examples of it. I tend to say the ultimate example of something that's less than the sum of its parts is the Timothy Dalton Bond movie, The Living Daylights. So if you like watch a music video that has like all the scenes from it, it looks amazing. You have like a car chase with lasers and missiles. You have this cool fight scene on a Hercules transport in Afghanistan. You have an awesome opening scene at Gibraltar. You have Timothy Dalton, who's great Bond. Um, very intimidating, very physical. Some of the best quips in any Bond movie. And it's just not that great. It's just that it has all these good elements. They just don't mesh very well together. And it comes across as like just being kind of an okay Bond movie when individually it has some of the best moments and best quips of any Bond movie. And Witch Hunter Robin's kind of like that. It's a show where the premise, the art style, the music, um, the characters, most things about it are things that I generally like. I like kind of cyberpunky, supernatural horror elements. Um, government conspiracies, stuff like that. I, I generally like that kind of thing. And it has one of my all-time favorite anime openings in Shell, which I still listen to every now and again, and one of the best anime closings, Half Pain. And I, I really enjoy both of them. And the music in the show is good, but it's just, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Now, Rich Hunter Robin was, I think it was 2001 or 2002. I remember watching it on YTV. And it was one of the first anime series that we got in the West, or at least that I grew up watching, that was more targeted towards adults or uh, teenagers. I'm not sure if it's technically a senin or it's a shonen, but it's a lot more senin-ish than a lot of the things that we had at that time. I mean, we had all kinds of anime, Pokemon, Digimon, Fighting Fudons, Power Stone, uh, all kinds of stuff like that, Monster Rancher, but that stuff was for kids, and I enjoyed that, but I was kind of growing up at the time, 2002, I was like 12, I wanted something a little more serious, and Escaflone provided that, as did Gundam Wing, but then Witch Hunter Robin came along, and I'm like, oh, cool. So I was in, into Buffy the Vampire Slayer at the time. And like, this kind of reminds me of that. I like this. And now watching it later, I kind of go, yeah. So what is the premise of Witch Hunter Robin? So it takes place in, I'm not sure if it's the near future or alternate history or, or something like that. But basically, um, what has begun to emerge en masse is beings called witches. 
who are humans that possess supernatural powers. Um, they're kind of a homo superior. What tends to happen with them is their powers emerge in response to extreme stress. And it kind of consumes them and they become psychopathic mass murderers. Some are just complete sadistic nut jobs. Some of them are better at blending into society. All of them kind of inevitably develop some form of psychosis and just kind of snap. And there's the STI, which is this group who hunts down witches. They're like the secret police who deals with crimes that the normal police can't solve. So, you know, pretty standard thing. Underground organization. They work for this vaguely associated with the Catholic Church global organization called Solomon that works at fighting witches. So that's kind of cool. Now there are people who can use special powers called craft users who aren't technically witches. I think they're people who haven't gone had psychotic breakdowns. The entire team is made up of either craft users or people who have substantial amounts of witch DNA but haven't awakened yet. Just because they're the only ones who are strong enough to fight the um, the witches. And they've developed this substance called Orbo, which kind of nullifies a witch's power. So they wear these pendants with it, and it prevents them from being damaged by the witches, or affected by the witches' powers. And they also use dart guns that have Orbo in it, that if they shoot a witch enough times, it'll just kind of pass out. And lose its ability to function. And... Unlike other um, divisions of Solomon, they capture witches alive and they send them off to the factory, which is run by these like Nazi-looking Soviet gas mask guys. And I'm sure they take good care of, th care of them. So at the beginning, um, one of them gets killed and we get our protagonist, Robin, witch hunter Robin, Ronacina, who comes in from Italy. So I'm not sure if she's supposed to be Italian or a Hapa. I think she's Eurasian, but she just kind of looks white. Looks very kind of Italian. And I like her a lot as a character. Um, and I don't say that just because she's Catholic. But I thought they did a pretty good job writing a teenage girl who's mature for age, but still a teenage girl who still kind of pouts sometimes. Who still kind of looks for a mentor figure. Who still is going through that awkward phase and wants people to take her seriously, but because of the, her age, she doesn't. Now, one of the issues with, with her, and this is an issue with all kinds of anime, is I think they state her age is like 14 or 15, when she obviously looks substantially older than that. She looks like 18. And I find they do this in a lot of anime, where they'll just draw the character as if they're in like their 20s. And then they'll just be like, we're going to make them 16 or 14 or whatever. I don't know if that's like... Because the Japanese are like... Have a fetish for underage jailbait. Or if they realize that developed, mature-looking women just sells better. Uh, with audiences. But I think the answer to that is yes. So, well, I like Robin a lot. The rest of the team's not bad. Uh, we have like the nerdy hacker guy... We have, like, the woman who's trying to be, like, really sophisticated. We have the slacker. We have the, um, like, Gendo Ikari-ish leader of the organization. Uh, and we have Amun, who is kind of Robin's ambiguous love interest, who's voiced by Crispin Freeman, and he kind of acts like Alucard, to be perfectly honest. He's just kind of, um... He's uh, the headhunter... He's kind of emotionless. He's enigmatic. And that's about it. I, I really don't like him. And he's supposed to be like the co-main character with Robin. But he's just not in the show very much. He's not interesting. I don't find his backstory, which we don't really learn much about, like worth going over. And anytime he's on screen, I kind of just wish that he'd leave. It's just, I dislike him for kind of some of the same reasons I dislike like Alucard. Where it's just like, look, he's cool. He's this dark, edgy guy. He's he's cool. And it's like, has he done anything to earn that? No. He's just... He's just there and we're supposed to like him. And he's supposed to be Robin's love interest for some reason. And that's kind of the premise of the show. So Robin shows up 
and she starts hunting witches with them, hence Witch Hunter Robin. So the first 13 episodes are basically just Monster of the Week. The idea was to um, in, in, uh, introduce the cast and kind of get their interpersonal relationships established, which I guess is fine. I mean, they did that with Evangelion. They gave us like six or seven episodes to introduce Shinji, and we really got to know him and see things from his perspective before Asuka showed up. And then the show kind of really got going. And then we eventually had, I think it was episode 16 or 17, where the tone just completely shifted and we went into insane, insane mode. So I don't necessarily dislike having that. Uh, Gurren Logan also did that. I think a lot of Gainax stuff does that, where there's like a dramatic tonal shift. Darling in the Franks was like that. Yeah, I think like anything Gainax or, or, or anime with Gainax characteristics has something like that. And I'm not necessarily against that, but here it's it's too long. 13 episodes without an overarching plot is just kind of meh. I'm not a big fan of episodic stuff. Or rather episodic stuff that's not in a like a first genre that I think benefits from it, like like comedy or, or something like that. I kind of prefer an overarching narrative, maybe with like some slice of life or other stuff thrown in. Sometimes there's just shows that are like a nothing show, and that's okay with me. But my issue here is that it's like a show that's very clearly geared towards there being some conspiracy overarching plot and starting at 13 episodes in halfway through a 26 episode series I think was just a really bad idea and I'm gonna I'm kind of like Plinkett where I just find stuff hard to follow a lot of the time and just for a lot of the cases cause they like the first 13 episodes are just them going through cases some of them I could follow some of them I couldn't follow I didn't find them particularly interesting I found a lot of them kind of if not meh I'm just like I don't know what's going on I don't know what's going on I don't know what people are doing I don't even know who I am anymore nothing makes sense even in my life and then once we get to the actual plot it's like it just kind of becomes a, a clusterfuck, which is preferable because it's less boring, but I still have no idea where things are going. Like an episode, I think there's 14 or whatever, Robin comes across some like old woman who talks about the witch hunts back during the like 18th century, and she gives her this like random like focus that dramatically boosts her powers and. Solomon decides they want to execute her for some reason. So they send, like, somebody who is called the Syndicate, who's never explained, attacks the STI headquarters, and they shoot everybody, but it turns out it was actually paintballs, and the whole thing was one massive G-slur op. And Robin goes into exile for some reason, and Amun just disappears, and then she spends the next six episodes hanging out with Amun's brother, and some stuff is going on behind the scenes. And then um, uh, it turns out that, like, like the last three or four episodes are like, let's just actually explain what, what what's even going on. And it's like, it turns out that Orbo is actually made from witches. It's like Soylent Green... They take pieces of witches, they turn it into Orbo, and the idea is to create um, a form of Orbo that can be used by normal humans so they can just exterminate all witches. Uh, and they don't have to keep hunters or seeds around anymore and just wipe everybody out. And, like, why does that even matter? And it means that, like, Robin has to be, like, taken out. And then there's some shit, like, where Robin is, like, this devil child. She's, like, this genetically engineered super witch who's supposed to be the new Eve of witches. And Amun's supposed to be the new Adam of witches. But Amun's gone for about ten episodes. And then he just randomly shows up again. It's just a mess. It's just, like... Okay, we had 13 episodes that were at least self-contained. I didn't. I, I found the detective stories kind of boring a lot of the time, and sometimes kind of difficult to follow. But at least it was like something. And then we just get into all this this lore that's just thrown at us. And unlike something that's based on a manga, where I can just go and look at the the wiki, and they'll have stuff from like interviews. They'll have stuff from 
things that happen in the manga, maybe that were fleshed out a bit more, and I can try to kind of puzzle this stuff out. This is based on an anime, so I just, I can't do any of that. So I'm just watching this thing, and it's like, what the, what's even going on? And I'm like, and I want to like it so bad, because I like the art style, I like Robin, I, I like the whole, like, conspiracy, which is in the modern context, genetic engineering, they throw all this stuff in, like fragments of the tree of knowledge and some weird existentialist metaphysical stuff that sounds kind of interesting. And it's just a complete letdown. And it ends on like a cliffhanger. And it's like if by the grace of syndication we're able to make a season two, maybe we'll explain some of this stuff. But season two was never made. And I kind of feel if you're going to make something that's 26 episodes, like you should try to make it somewhat self contained. And I guess it kind of is, but it, it just feels like they waited way too long. They shoved too much into too few episodes, and it just didn't really work. And the pacing was weird. They wasted a lot of time with just really slow episodes. I just think with better writing, with better pacing, with a better secondary main character... This could have been, like, a really good show. This could have been a classic. This could have been, like, something I remember from my childhood and I go back and rewatch and, like, you know, that was awesome. Like, Digimon Tamers is something. When I saw it as a kid, I didn't really like it. I went back and I rewatched it. And, like, you know what? This is actually really good. This is really good. Much better quality than I remember it being. This is something I remember being good quality and I go back and watch. I'm just like, what even is this? Like, I can't follow it. It's not interesting. It's not entertaining. It has all these good elements, but they're just completely wasted. So, that's my review of Witch Hunter Robin. I would not recommend watching it. Definitely go listen to Shell and listen to Half Pain. There alone is worth it. But, overall, it's going to get a thumb down from me.